What was the secret behind filming the bison and locust attacks? Were the maggots and the snake real? And what and who would look surprisingly different without visual manipulation? Hi, I'm Joy. Are you ready to peel away the VFX layers? Sure you are. Let's go. Three ships stranded on dry land. In season three, Jamie and Claire took the Artemis to the Caribbean to save young Ian from a pirate ship. But then their rescue mission hit a speed bump when Claire was captured by another ship, the Porpoise. In the show, the dramatic sea voyages and scary storms all looked pretty real. But in reality, the cast and crew were filming on bone dry land. No water in sight for miles. Of course, as a movie and series fanatic yourself, you already knew they couldn't simply plonk Balf and Hewan on a ship in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Still, it's pretty impressive and ironic to know all the action took place at Cape Town Studios in South Africa. Ironic since the country was experiencing a severe drought at the time of filming. So the ships were parked on dry land all along. I'd say parked because these babies have wheels. That's so they can be moved around to get the best camera angles. Knowing that, how did the actors recreate the appearance of staggering about on the rough yet non-existent waves? There's actually a secret to that. This boat could go on water, it could go on land, it has hydraulics, so we had uh, do, do a bit gimbal. of gimbal. gimbal. Yeah, the below and above deck spaces on the Artemis are mounted on a gimbal with hydraulics underneath, giving the rolling impression of being at sea. Check it out for yourself. Can we get everyone gimbling, please? Yes, everyone, can you all gimbal on that side, please? So, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Roberts told EW, we would have to stop because there's usually 40 to 50 people on the ship and people get seasick. I get seasick. Even when we were doing the tests on the Artemis, which actually does go from 10 degrees to 10 degrees. Hectic. Right, so even though the actors could gimbal and get seasick to their heart's content, one big element was missing, the actual ocean. Well, that's why massive green screens flanked the Artemis. The blue and green screen visual effects were what really sold the ocean voyages. We had 14 to 15 cranes every day. It was crazy, Roberts told EW. While the surface water and crashing waves were simulated, the water rushing onto the deck was all real. A combination of wind and rain machines were used. The distance of the sea, all our wind machines, we've got the porpoise over the other side. Got a Caribbean village over there. What I enjoyed most was that we'd rehearse it when the actors are dry and then they have to get wet. So my favorite part of the day was when I could just completely soak them. I know they secretly loved it. Sure they did. It looked hot out there. The waves might be fake, but Sam learned that they can feel pretty real. To pull off one stunt where a wave was supposed to hit and toss him to the other side of the boat, he tried to fall on soft bags. Instead, he discovered they weren't soft at all. But I've had a lot of fun on the boats, especially with the rigging climbing to the top. Hewan went to say, It's quite amusing. These boats are so incredible, so realistic, it just transports you. As soon as you get on one and the sails open, you feel like it has a life of its own. On another note, how many lightning strikes do you think had to be added by the CGI team? Not many, to be honest. After waiting for long, they eventually got one great stormy day with a few actual strikes. Roberts was lucky enough to have three cameras up and ready. While most of the filming took place on the Artemis, the pirate ship was also put to good use. Roberts explained, We never actually filmed on it, but we used it as a model for the visual effects when Jamie and Claire witness young Ian being taken off the coast by pirates. Next time you see that scene, you'll remember it's all thanks to the magic of CGI. Creatures that run, fly, creep, and crawl. Season 5 tackled the bison attack from Diana Gabaldon's novel The Fiery Cross. The women worked together as a team to protect Jemmy, even Lizzie. While she didn't go to grab Jemmy immediately, she went and stood between the bison and him. Probably a good thing she didn't move too quickly or the bison might have attacked. In any case, if you guessed the bison was not real, you'd be right. The scene wasn't easy to film as the actual bison needed to be green screened into the shot. It also meant the cast would need something to look at. Now, what I find really funny is that a crew member became the eye line. In fact, the lucky person had to dress up as the bison. We put one of our yeah. crew members, we draped him in a big fur buffalo coat and made him walk <laughs> the, the path of the buffalo. Sophie, who had to act with 
yes. um, our Buffalo stand-in, and uh, which is always hard to do, making yourself not laugh, but uh, she yeah. did a great job. I'm sure this led to plenty of laughs. But wait, there was another season 5 scene that had fans wondering just how was it filmed? In Better to Marry Than Burn, Roger and Brie got to battle a plague of locusts at Fraser's Ridge. Executive producer Roberts put an end to the mystery. We used both live and VFX locusts to create the swarm. The same with the smoke. Some of that was created by our special effects team, then it was enhanced with VFX. The actors are all real. While we're on the topic of live animals, have you also wondered whether those maggots used by Claire to treat Jamie's wound were real? In this case, they actually were. No CGI here. Sam had to let them crawl all over his leg. He recalled them being very noisy and demanding, not to mention fast. So I had this prosthetic on, obviously, and you can't see where it ends. So I was just kind of waiting for them to like get find the edge and get under it. I was also like trying to stay in the scene as well. And it's kind of hard when you've got a thousand little maggots charging around trying to get in every, every crook. Are you cringing already? In turn, Kat was fascinated by the creatures. Why, of course, she didn't need them to crawl all over her. Couldn't they have just used CGI and spared Sam the agony of dealing with his creepy co-stars? Well, probably, but since the CGI in previous seasons weren't always the most realistic thing ever, this boat scene refers, maybe Sam's sacrifice was all worth it. Oh, and apparently this snake was just as real as the maggots. According to producer Tony Graffia, the five-foot python was named Scar and was flesh and blood. Balf said, There's a scene where Scar slithers across my character. I had my skirts around me and snakes always tried to find a little dark crevice to go in. He kept trying to go in and hide. I thought I was being very cool with the snake, but all of a sudden I was like, all right, get him out of here. Would you have been calm and collected if Scar was slithering over you? Who's my favorite co-star, Scar or Sam Hewen? Well, I would have to say Scar, really. You know, Scar doesn't talk back. Scar doesn't eat my snacks, though she might eat me. And the horrors didn't stop there for Kat. According to Graffia, the ants were real too, although they didn't have as many. The rest were multiplied by visual effects. But most of what we do is real. The beetles in the jar were real. We always go for it on Outlander. If something can be done practically, we do it practically. That's why we love this show so much. Everyone is always dedicated to deliver only the best. From landscapes to legs, cool visual effects. With its rolling highlands and castles, it's tough to believe Outlander is actually shot in the 21st century. Season 1's 18th century realism is thanks to the outstanding work of VFX supervisor Jonathan Privet and the artists at UK's Double Negative. According to Privet, keeping it real was one of the early mandates from the show's producers. Well, it turns out Double Negative had their work cut out for them. By the time the season 1 finale aired, the studio had completed just under 700 VFX shots. If you were wondering, that's a lot! In real life, Dune Castle is the location used for Castle Leoch. While the castle is well preserved, the experts had to make several changes digitally to make it look like the medieval ruins of 1945. Privet added that, since the show was shot on location in Scotland, a huge deal of the work was removing anything that would be out of place in time and replacing it with other elements like the Royal Mile as just one example. The same goes for depicting Scotland's natural landscapes. Privet says, there's a lot of architectural and environmental work on Outlander. Contrary to popular belief, some of Scotland is actually quite flat, so we did add in the Highlands. Impressive. However, Privet pointed out that one of the biggest challenges turned out to be character-based. Remember Callum McKenzie, played by Gary Lewis? Since the character suffered from a syndrome that made his legs deformed and curved, the experts had to replace the actor's legs with digital limbs. Lewis wore special socks that could be manipulated so that they'd appear bent. He also had wedged shoes to help create Callum's unique gait. The team were initially planning to replace only the bottom of Gary's legs and thought they'd later match the bottoms and tops of his legs. But that turned out to be kind of impossible and really hard to do with a moving camera and a moving person. So they figured out a better solution. In the end, we replaced all of his legs right from the top. He was wearing short trousers, so they had to be simulated in cloth. It was a real challenge, but it ended up being an amazing character because of the legs. Quite a lot of work. Thanks for watching! Which effects impressed you the most? How are you holding up amidst Droughtlander? Let us know in the comments, and you know the drill. 
stay awesome.